I'm uh, Judy Hamilton, I'm delegate from Kokodi CLP. I'm also a councillor in Five Council, Co-op Party and GMB Chair Conference. I'm speaking, I'm speaking in support of Contemporary Resolution 1. Three years ago, I stood with our trade unions in Five Council and moved the motion that condemned blacklisting and said that we would stamp out blacklisting in our contracts. Today I want to speak to you about the construction charter. I'd like to begin by congratulating my own union, the GMB, and Comrades in Unite and the predecessor construction union, UCAT, for being at the vanguard of the campaign to develop construction charters across local government. This has been pursued on a council-by-council -council basis, some pursued by the joint trade unions and some pursued by Labour councillors, and the first charter was signed in Liverpool in 2015. Today, councils have agreed to bespoke charters for their authority so far in Liverpool, Renfrewshire, North Ayrshire, Durham City Council, South Tyneside, Barnsley, Wakefield, Sheffield, Bradford and Doncaster and Fife. <laughs> In fact, I worked together with the trade unions so that we would develop a charter together, which was agreed and adopted yesterday unanimously across the Council. The adoption of a charter by local authorities is about embedding minimum standards across public sector contracts that those who seek to profit from these contracts should adhere to. Councils need to demonstrate standards of good practice in employment, and we should lead by example and the same expectations should be placed upon those contractors who deliver our local infrastructure. We've already heard from Stevie this, mo this afternoon sorry, about large public sector contracts that have seen some very poor practice. The main contractor on that major hospital was exposed as having repeatedly blocked trade unions from having adequate access to the site to ensure that the workers could be fully organised, protected and represented. That's on a major public contract. The flagship construction project, the Queen's Ferry Crossing, has been beset with employment problems. And evidence obtained by Unite showed that umbrella companies have been engaged on site, exploiting workers, highly skilled people, highly skilled workers, building the infrastructure of our country, but not highly valued, forced to pay both employer and employee national insurance, pay their own holiday pay, pay both sides of the pension contribution and receive less than the rate agreed for the job. Workers have been engaged on site to undermine collective agreements and some paid even below the national minimum wage. Previously, we've seen that the use of agency labour has meant that, for example, people who have been blacklisted have been unable to pursue legal remedy as they were not employed in the first place. Direct employee status ensures protection of pension and national insurance. This will ensure that companies are forced into a cultural shift in terms of supporting the entitlement and rights that direct employment establishes. Of course, we had to address health and safety. Employment rights and employment standards must all be paramount in our working and we need to ensure that all of our contractors are fully compliant with all of our standards. Many of our contracts are delivered through HUBCO, the Scottish, name, the Scottish Government's name for PFI, and the Council's procuring areas must dictate how projects are delivered by HUBCO contractors through the tender documentation. It must include community benefits, local jobs and apprenticeships. And whilst we will encourage the real living wage, we recognise that industry, industry collective agreements are favourable and support workers with higher and more fair recognition of their skills and working conditions. Yeah. In Fife, we've embarked on a huge house building programme. We support, supported the construction industry through our own building services and 15 local companies providing local jobs and apprenticeships. And this year, Five Council is the largest developer of social housing in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Two seconds. The <laughs> I would like it then, please. Right. 
Okay. The charter ensures that workers employed on projects underpinned by the council receive decent treatment. It's a first step in stamping out these shoddy practices. It's time to redistribute the social and economic benefits of public contracts. This is about fair pay, respect and safety for all workers. Sorry, I'm going to have to cut you off now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.